Okay, so what we're going to talk about right now is saccades, and saccades are ballistic movements. What is a ballistic movement? What does that mean? It means that once you set it off, you, it's, it's out of your control. It's, it's a bullet. It's on its path. There's nothing you can do. You can, it's not a smart bomb. You can't change its trajectory once it's, at, once it's started. And so the way that a saccade looks is that there is an initiate, from the moment of initiation, it takes a couple hundred milliseconds to actually plan that saccade. So the, the initiation, this is the time when the, the nervous system is really doing a big job. And then to carry it out is very quick. So there's a pulse, there, which means that the eyes are actually being moved by contraction of extraocular muscles, and they're being moved really quickly. This is accomplished in, in, in 10, 20 milliseconds. And then there's a maintenance uh, 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 point where the step, you have to continue to keep this eccentric position, okay, or keep this eye position. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna look at the initiation, how we get, how we get the pulse. Okay, the target comes on, we decide that we have to abduct the eye. How are we going to do that? How are we going to get this to work? And, and we're going to focus on the initiation. So if we go over to the board, what we see is that um, the initiation is taking place in this area that I introduced before is the horizontal gaze center. It's also known as the paramedian pontine reticular formation, so the PPRF. And in this area are these... Um, are these uh, neurons that are going to control movement that aren't doing it. They're not motor neurons, but they are necessary for, for making eye movements. And one of the uh, neurons is called an omnipause neuron. This omnipause neuron is always firing. It's always firing until it decides that we're going to have a saccade. And the saccade that this... this um, uh, horizontal gaze center is going to support is a saccade to the same side. So if we're, we're on the left of the midline, we're going to make an eye movement, a saccade to the left. And the way that saccade happens is that the, there's a pause in the activity of the omnipause neuron. So during that pause, this neuron that's downstream from it is no longer inhibited. This, neur this neuron contains GABA. And the ner next neuron in line, which is called an excitatory, excitatory burst neuron, is now going to burst. So it's kept silent because of this inhibition, but when the omnipause neuron pauses, it fires. And this is the time that we're going to now activate uh, neurons in the abducens nucleus. Now, the first type of neuron that the excitatory burst neuron is going uh, is going to contact is the motor neuron, a motor neuron in the abducens nucleus. So this is on the same side. This motor neuron projects to the lateral rectus, and so it's going to contract this lateral rectus. It's going to bring the uh, ipsilateral eye, it's going to abduct the ipsilateral eye. Now, one possibility would be that this uh, information was sent some, through some other pathway off to the ocular motor nucleus because in order to sh shift our gaze to the left, we not only need this lateral rectus to contract, we also need the contralateral medial rectus to contract. Well, it turns out that we get the information to the ocular motor nucleus using a specific neuron, this neuron here, which is the internuclear interneuron, the internuclear interneuron. And it's a very... Uh, special important neuron. It takes whatever is information is given to the motor neuron, it takes that same information and it sends it to the ocular motor nucleus. All right? It has an axon which crosses the midline right there and then travels up this pathway, which is the MLF, the medial longitudinal fasciculus, and reaches the ocular motor nucleus. All right? And so that way, in that way, we contract the medial rectus and the lateral rectus. And I should just mention very briefly that there's also an IBN, so an inhibitory burst neuron, which also gets 
disinhibited when the um, omnipause neuron pauses. But in this case, it is, um, it's going across the midline to inhibit both the motor neuron and the internuclear interneuron on the opposite side. And that leads to an inhibition of the contralateral rectus, lateral rectus, and the ipsilateral medial rectus. So that there's excitation of these two muscles and inhibition or relaxation of those two muscles, and you get a leftward saccade. Okay? That's how a saccade works. That's all it is. Now, what could possibly go wrong? Well, the most common thing that is going to go wrong, and you will see this, and it will, not only will you see it, you, you may already know somebody who has it, and you will see it on boards. And that is called internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Internuclear ophthalmoplegia, typically um, uh, abbreviated as INO. So internuclear ophthalmoplegia, one of the reasons that it's so common is because it happens in people with multiple sclerosis. Why does it happen with people with multiple sclerosis? Because this MLF pathway right here is extremely heavily myelinated. All right? So this is a very heavily myelinated tract. And if there's demyelination here, then this yoking of the medial rectus motor neuron to the abducens motor neuron doesn't happen. So let's just imagine that we, we, we lost the MLF, the right MLF, that, that the right MLF was demyelinated. Let's say that we were looking uh, to the left. If we're looking to the left, we have this eye. And what we want, we want this and this, uh, those two muscles to be contracted the right medial rectus and the left lateral rectus. And if there's a, a problem in the right MLF, will we get the, li the, the left lateral rectus to, to contract? OK, will we get the left lateral rectus to contract? Yeah, because it doesn't have anything to do with the MLF. Here's the motor neuron. It doesn't have to go through the MLF. It goes right outside. Out, out of the pons and goes off to the lateral rectus. So this is going to happen, yes. Um, and, and now will this happen? Well, to get the contralateral medial rectus to contract, we go via the internuclear interneuron via the MLF. So no. No, that's not going to work. And so what you have is that during leftward gaze, a person with a right-sided internuclear ophthalmoplegia will look like this. Okay, they're looking straight ahead here. They're looking off to the left over here. That's internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Now, what would happen if they look to the right? If they look to the right, everything is reversed. I, I, we haven't drawn it, but uh, there's a PPRF on, on the right side. It contacts the abducens nucleus. We know that looking to the right, that this is going to happen. The lateral rectus is going to happen. Um, and what about getting the medial rectus on the left side to contract if there's a lesion on the right MLF? Well, that's going to happen too. And so the person will be able to look uh, to, to, the, uh, to the right. OK? So what would happen now if, instead of having a one-sided uh, uh, demyelination of the MLF, that you had bilateral? What would happen is now this would not be, this would now be looking straight ahead as, as the one I um, abducted. And so this is a bilateral internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Now, let's just, let's just think about it for one more moment. In both of these situations, in any situation of internuclear ophthalmoplegia, will we be able to make vergence movements? OK, let's think about that. A vergence movement means that you contract both of the medial rectus. But 
Importantly, you remember, and I know you do, that virgins movements depend on pons or midbrain. Midbrain, right. So it, you don't need this internuclear interneuron to make a virgins movement, okay? So virgins is going to be completely intact in this, in this person that has the internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Even a bilateral internuclear ophthalmoplegia, they will be able to uh, have a virgins movement because it doesn't depend on either the PPRF or the internuclear interneuron. Now, I'm going to tell you a, ta a, a puzzle that you can then work through to see whether you actually understand um, uh, the saccade circuitry. So let's just take a look at the, um, this is abducens nucleus. Here's the midline. Here's another abducens nucleus. And here is MLF. And here's another MLF. Now let's say that we have a lesion that affects this area. This is going to produce something called a one and a half syndrome. And your job is to try and figure out um, what will happen during leftward gaze and wh what will happen during rightward gaze. So what you want to do is draw, draw what the eyes are going to look like during leftward gaze and during rightward gaze. Um, and finally, answer the question of whether uh, a person with one and a half syndrome will have virgence movements. All right. In the next section, we're going to, um, we're going to divert from this for one moment and, and look at the pairs of extraocular muscles and how, what, what are the neural mechanisms that pair them? <laughs>